536 AD, the year of death. Join us as we explore what is known as the worst year to be alive. During this episode, we'll explore the year 536 AD, a year that was literally marred in darkness, death, and famine. Imagine you're spending the middle of the day like you normally do. Maybe you're at work or out mowing the lawn, and all of a sudden, without warning, the sky turns dark. The sun now looks like the moon, and clouds of ash are falling from the sky. The next day, the sun doesn't come up. Day and night are the same, each and every hour covered in darkness. If you could watch the news, you'd find out that what you are seeing is happening all over the globe. A few months later, there will be no food in the supermarkets, crops will be dying, and all of the year's harvest will fail. And it's all about to get much worse. During the spring and summer months, you'll hear about snow in July. Temperatures will have dropped at least 15 to 30 degrees globally. Summer feels like winter in most places. You are now in the year of darkness, marked by famine and death. There is no known explanation for what is happening yet, and not long from now, a plague will devastate most areas of the known world, killing as much as 35 to 50% of some major cities. This is what the world went through in the year 536 AD, also known as the worst year to be alive. History is often scarier than fiction. Welcome to the Dark History Project, where we delve deep into the stories of the past that may have been overlooked or forgotten, but have had a significant impact on history. From forgotten battles and unsung heroes to tragic events and mysterious disappearances, we explore the darker corners of history to shed light on the stories that have shaped our world. Join us as we uncover the hidden tales that deserve to be remembered and bring them to light for a new generation of listeners. This is The Dark History Project. Before we get started, we would love for you to subscribe, like, and comment on whatever platform you are listening to or viewing this on. That way, you'll know when new episodes are available right away. Also, please share this episode with your friends and family if you think they'll find it interesting. The year 536 AD is often recorded as a time of profound darkness and despair. This was not the metaphorical gloom of conflict or famine, but an unnerving, literal darkness that enveloped the earth, plunging it into an apocalyptic twilight that lasted an entire year. In recent times, we have become more fearful of what human beings can do, such as nuclear war, terrorism, or biological weapons. But what happened in 536 was a natural event. The terror began with a cataclysmic volcanic eruption. The perpetrator, of which remains unknown to this day, unleashed a monstrous ash cloud. This dark harbinger drifted across the skies, an ominous shroud veiling the sun. The once bright and comforting glow of our celestial life giver was reduced to a mere ghostly specter, casting eerie, eternal shadows upon the land. Studies point to a volcanic eruption in El Salvador, another in Indonesia, while another theory points to multiple eruptions occurring around the world at once. On this last theory, researchers have found evidence of multiple eruptions during that decade in ice core samples from both poles. As the sun faded, a chilling winter gripped the globe, merciless and cruel. Summer turned into winter, crops failed, and famine gnawed at the bones of civilization. Byzantine historian Procopius wrote, The sun gave forth its light without brightness, like the moon, painting a horrifying picture of this desolate time. Just imagine living for months or even years with night and day looking the same. Meanwhile, in the heart of the Roman Empire, the darkness spawned economic disaster and political instability, further sawing the seeds of chaos. In the distant lands of Scandinavia, the long, grim winter decimated agriculture. The normally hardy people found themselves teetering on the brink of survival, haunted by the specter of starvation. But the worst was yet to come. The sudden climactic change set the stage for one of the most devastating pandemics in history the Plague of Justinian. 
Arriving on the heels of the Great Darkness, the plague tore through the weekend population, claiming millions of lives and marking a horrifying climax to this dreadful year. Now, saying there was a climactic change is not to get political. The average temperature around the world went down as much as 15 degrees. Just think of that swing in temperature during the summer of wherever you live. Here in Texas, it would be great to be at 85 degrees during the summer when it's actually over 100 for two or three months. But even saying that, I have no idea how that difference in temperature affects agriculture. And back then it did. 2020 was a terrible year as the pandemic took millions of lives, with people stuck indoors for months, unable to see their loved ones or friends. Many people lost their jobs, and industries and small businesses were decimated. During these years, we saw how no government was prepared for what was about to come. Imagine if a natural event like the one that took place in 536 AD happens today. The events of 536 AD serve as a chilling testament to the terrifying power of natural forces and how swiftly Mother Nature can bring humanity to its knees. Let's take a look at what people would have seen during this time. Day turned into night, with no one having a clue as to what was going on. It's not like today when you could just turn on Twitter to get news of whatever devastating event is taking place. The air grows cold and suffocating. The horrors just kept coming as days and weeks passed with no change for the better. Torrents of ash and smoke are everywhere and the once beautiful landscapes start dying. Lands once full of crops and animals start looking like a wasteland. Imagine back then people not being able to explain this. Instead, offering tales about demons and malevolent spirits being responsible for this. The big cities start to look like ruins. People start going hungry. And things are about to get worse. The disrupted natural cycles of day and night not only affected the environment. People were led to confusion and disorientation. The lack of sunlight had a devastating impact on agriculture. Crops failed to grow due to reduced photosynthesis, leading to widespread famine. The scarcity of food resources caused a decline in population, as well as social unrest. The prolonged darkness also disrupted ecosystems, which led to a collapse in the food chain. If you're listening to this, you might think, well, I'll just hunt and eat meat. The darkness and its effects resulted in a decimation of the wildlife population, further exacerbating the food shortage and adding more death to this event. In short, there was nothing to hunt. Another issue was the volcanic ash settling on the land. It contaminated water sources all over, causing widespread health issues and disease outbreaks. As expected, the collapse of agriculture and food supply and subsequent famine led to increased social unrest. The people who were still alive were fighting over whatever was left to survive. As governments weakened, it made communities more vulnerable to external threats. As expected, empires took advantage of the chaos and invaded their enemies. Now imagine on top of all of that, the people you know are dying left and right. In Mediterranean areas, communities lost up to 50% of their populations. Let's talk about what happened in the months and years after. As mentioned earlier, the scarcity of food and resources caused conflicts over the dwindling supplies. Communities fought each other for survival, which led to an increase in looting, raids, and disputes. All this led to waves of invasions and migration. The other problem that arose was the rapid spread of disease. As famine weakened people's immune systems around the world, populations became highly vulnerable to infections. Malnourishment and overcrowded living conditions created ideal breeding grounds for disease to flourish. Epidemics and pandemics swept the continents. Historians noted a spike in outbreaks of diseases during this period, including outbreaks of bubonic plague, smallpox, and other infectious diseases. The weakened and traumatized population struggled to cope with the onslaught of these illnesses, which further depleted their numbers and strained their ability to recover. 
The socioeconomic impacts of these events were profound. Cities and once thriving civilizations were left in ruins. Trade routes and networks collapsed, leading to economic decline and isolation. Cultural and artistic achievements waned as survival became the primary focus for individuals and communities. Let's take a look at the scientific evidence. One major piece of evidence comes from the writings of Byzantine historian Procopius, who lived during this period. Procopius documented a mysterious cloud that made the sun appear as a mere crescent, causing a year-long dimness in 536 AD. This event correlated with a significant drop in temperatures across the globe, leading to crop failures and famine. The physical evidence backing up these historical accounts comes primarily from the analysis of ice cores. These cores, notably from Greenland and Antarctica, have shown that around 536 AD, there were significant deposits of volcanic ash. These cores, notably from Greenland and Antarctica, have shown that around 536 AD, there were significant deposits of volcanic ash. These eruptions would have caused a stratospheric veil of ash, obscuring the sun's rays and leading to a global drop in temperatures. Scientists like Michael McCormick from Harvard University have also found tiny particles of volcanic glass in the ice cores, showing that not one, but potentially two or more massive volcanic eruptions occurred around this time. According to their research, one eruption likely occurred somewhere in North America and another in Iceland. The latter eruption was so substantial that it could have created the prolonged ash cloud that caused the global temperature drop. Tree ring studies further corroborate this evidence. Anomalously narrow tree rings, a sign of slowed growth due to harsh conditions, are consistently found in trees alive during this period, reflecting the global climactic downturn. The tree ring studies are fascinating. From trees in Europe to South America, the trees showed that there was practically no summer during those years. Besides volcanic eruptions, there is another line of evidence suggesting a significant cosmic impact event. A study published in 2018 found an unusual spike in concentration of platinum in Greenland's ice layers corresponding to 536 AD. This could be indicative of an extrasolar object, such as a meteor or comet colliding with Earth. Taken together, these historical records and scientific findings provide strong evidence that 536 AD was indeed the year of extreme environmental calamity. Volcanic eruptions blanketed the Earth in ash, blocking sunlight and triggering a global volcanic winter. This, potentially combined with a cosmic impact event, caused widespread crop failures and famine, while initiating one of the most challenging periods in human history. However, the precise mechanisms and sequence of events still remain subjects of ongoing scientific investigation. Just in 2020, the whole world went through a pandemic. As we all know, it was chaotic, governments all over the world were caught off guard, the economy was severely affected, many lost their jobs, and up to this day, we can see the impact the pandemic had on children, not to mention the millions of people that died and the families affected. Socializing went almost 100% online. Sadly, politics was brought into this, and political affiliations to both the extreme right and extreme left were seen throughout the world. In the event that a volcanic eruption on the scale of the 536 AD catastrophe happened today, it would represent a true global crisis. The eruption itself would initially manifest in a dramatic display of nature's might. A towering ash cloud charged with lightning would rise miles into the sky, emitting deafening roars and shaking the ground for hundreds of miles around. This eruption would spew vast amounts of volcanic ash, gas, and aerosols into the atmosphere. In the immediate aftermath, local communities would suffer the most direct and brutal impacts. Lava flows would destroy everything in their path, while the immense ash cloud could bring about darkness and a winter-like condition for months. The choking ash would make the air unbreathable, pollute water supplies, and collapse buildings under its weight. Emergency services would be overwhelmed as they grapple with the immediate humanitarian crisis and try to evacuate populations. 
As the ash and aerosols disperse globally, carried by the wind and jet stream, the global impact would become apparent. These particles would partly block out the sun's rays, causing a sudden and severe drop in global temperatures, much like a volcanic winter. This would disrupt weather patterns, causing unseasonal frosts, crop failures, and famine worldwide. Beyond the immediate loss of life, the profound disruption to agricultural systems would have cascading effects on global food security, causing price hikes and potential civil unrest. Additionally, the severe disruption to air travel, both due to immediate safety concerns and longer-term climate effects, would have significant economic and social consequences. In our hyperconnected world, a volcanic event of this magnitude would not only be a natural disaster, but also a severe test of our global systems of governance, logistics, and mutual aid. The eruption would serve as a sobering reminder of our continued vulnerability to nature's strength, even in the 21st century. As mentioned before, the events of 536 AD had huge environmental impacts, as well as impacts on the economy and society but the impact on health was beyond breathing ashes for almost two years. Pandemics and plagues came out of these events, plural. I can't help but think about what something like this would do today. Even with all our technology, smartphones and apps, there's probably nothing we can do. And since the way the world acted against the 2020 COVID pandemic, it is hard to think we would all do a better job. Let's explore somewhere close to home. Yellowstone National Park. The supervolcano at Yellowstone has had three eruptions in the last two million years. One, 2.1 million years ago, the second, 1.3 million years ago, and the last one being 664,000 years ago. Now, right now, there's no indication that the supervolcano might blow up and hopefully that's true. But let's explore what type of impact this would have. Just to start with, Colorado, Wyoming, Idaho, Utah, and Montana would be buried with at least three feet of volcanic ash. But the ash would spread all the way through the entire United States and even impact the south of Canada and northern Mexico. The study by the U.S. Geological Survey says it's not sure if it would happen, but most likely we wouldn't get the worst-case scenario. What may be more common is a set of small eruptions. Now, the ash from a large explosion would take months to reach other places, but volcanic ash can be deadly to people, plants, animals, and wildlife. This ash can also be catastrophic to our infrastructure from buildings, roads, and energy-producing facilities. A volcano this size would actually impact the global climate, most likely cooling the planet down a bit, but sadly, this is not the way we would like our planet to cool down. There are other volcanoes around the world that are considered the most dangerous active volcanoes. They are located in Italy, Mexico, Ecuador, Philippines, and here in the United States, Mount St. Helen in Washington, which last erupted in 1980, killing almost 60 people and affecting 200 square miles of forest, killing countless wildlife. Let's assume for a second that Yellowstone goes off. It would obviously cause chaos and tragedy in the United States, and probably for Canada and Mexico as well. People in Europe, Asia, and Africa may think that they'll be okay, but we live in a world where all economies are connected and dependent on each other. Even if they try to become independent of the U.S., it'll take months or years to do so. As we know, most of the manufacturing takes place in Asia and South America. But the impact of intellectual property coming out of places like California and New York, especially around tech, would be immediate. Just think of most social media companies. They would be impacted immediately. And it would be the same thing if an eruption would happen in Asia or Europe. We would feel the impact as well. And we're just talking economics and trade. The environmental impact would be felt worldwide. And that brings us to the end of our discussion on the cataclysmic events of 536 AD. It's humbling to see how a series of natural disasters from volcanic eruptions to climate shifts brought about the worst year to be alive, causing widespread societal upheaval. This historical lens has helped us understand our interconnectivity with the natural world and the profound impact it can have on human societies. These events are a sobering reminder that we aren't above or beyond nature. Let's take lessons from 536 AD 
and focus on resilience, preparedness, and environmental preservation. Thank you for being with us for this episode of the Dark History Project. Hopefully we have inspired some of you to look further into these characters and stories. Please help us out by sharing, subscribing, or liking this episode. If the platform you are listening to allows for comments, please let us know what you think. Feel free to discuss this topic or what topics you'd like for us to cover in the future. We hope you enjoyed it, and our next episode will come out soon, where we'll talk about the origins of Area 51. See you then.